Agent, it's Dr. Candle. I want to stress to you the vital importance of safeguarding any civilians you may come across. The map says some of those people must have survived the dark. That means they've got antibodies to it that I need to have a hope in the hell of fighting this thing. And the ones who are just sick, having a broader genetic diversity of virus samples will help us track the virus's rate of mutation. Which is a long way to say, keep those people alive until I get what I need from them. Got that? Great. every last vestige of detectable virus, where would you go? Wherever the biggest concentration is on. Refugee camp, shanty camp. from survivors, so keep them extra alive, I guess. You know what I'm saying. I'm going back to work now. Candle out.
ATF strike force ready to move in. They'll take samples from as many refugees as they can find. Medical personnel? A couple of EMTs in the mix, Doctor? Yes. A couple? As in only two? The rest are first aid certified. They know how to jump things. Get going, agent. Without contaminating the samples, I assume. Or infecting themselves. Yes. I'll take your word for it. Thank you, Doctor. Get moving, agent. to do it again. Hey, hey, what is up, everyone? The LDB is back at it again. Coming at you today with my Alpha Bridge PvE build. Now, recently I've been playing a little bit more PvE than I typically do, testing out my Tactician build that I just finished up. If you haven't seen that, I will have a link for that at the end of the video, as well as in the description below. Uh, but regardless, playing with all those electronics on the build, I really needed to come back to something that had a little bit more firepower, and so I kind of redid PvE for Alpha Bridge, and this is what I came up with. It's an absolute beast. I hope you guys enjoy this, and if you do or find it helpful, definitely smash that like button, subscribe for future content, especially if you are new to the channel, and uh, drop a comment down there letting me know how you're running Alpha Bridge in PvE in 1.8.3. So let's get into it. 
Okay, so let's talk about these skills and talents really quick. Nothing too crazy going on here. Got the recon pack pulse going. Since this is an assault rifle build, we do need to get our crit chance up as much as possible. And since we have a little bit of electronics on the build, we get a nice little chunk of crit chance on here. 12.8% up and a 35 second cooldown. Compared to, per se, the scrambler, that's only 10.9% with a 47 second cooldown. Or the tactical scanner, that is 10.9% with a 52 second cooldown. I would definitely go with the Recon Pack Pulse. All we're trying to do is get that crit chance up so you can do a little bit more damage with a lower cooldown so you can get it back as fast as possible. Now, moving on to the first aid here, we have a booster shot, temporarily increasing damage and damage resistance. Now, since we do have some electronics, you could always go with Overdose. As you can see, the self-heal here is much higher than it is for the booster shot, 73,000 compared to 122,000. So, again, up to you. That's all personal preference. I simply like that temporary increase of damage and damage resistance. Uh, so other than that, moving on to the signatures. Well, I don't get to pick a signature since we have the six piece on. This is going to be rotating for me. So on to the talents. Okay, so nothing too crazy here. We have critical save on. We have precision equipped for when my pulse is down. This will take effect instead. Uh, if you haven't tried steady hands with assault rifles, definitely try it out. Even if you enter cover just for a split second and get out, this will still be proc and will last for 10 seconds. That recoil reduction is a big thing right there. If you want to land those headshots at a distance, this helps out amazing. I mean, it's great. Definitely try it out. That's a must for me right there. Uh, on the move, kill a hostile while moving to reduce incoming damage by 15% for 10 seconds. So we're getting damage resistance from that, as well as critical save. We get a little bit of damage up from precision, and we get some accuracy from steady hands. Pretty well rounded, I would say. So, on to the build. And here it is. So, as you can see, nothing crazy. We have a six-piece classified alpha bridge. I try to get those primary stats as close as possible, but honestly, when you're working with these purple mods, it's a little bit tougher than you think. But don't worry, those purple mods are well worth it, and I will show you why in just a little bit. Now, first, let's check out what we're actually going to get from Alpha Bridge. The two-piece gives you 100% health regen, the three-piece gives you 5% weapon damage, and the four-piece gives you Alpha Bridge. If your primary and secondary weapon is of the same category, they share the free talent. All talent requirements are ignored for all weapon talents. So that's that way you're going to get a fourth talent for your weapon as well as any requirements for those talents being ignored. So you could have a 10,000 electronics build and it doesn't matter. All of your talents are going to be unlocked because, well, Alpha Bridge is awesome like that. Now, the five piece gives you another 25% health regen and another 10% weapon damage. And the six piece, it gets pretty, you know, interesting right here. You have an inactive personal version of all signature skills that are rotating every six seconds and can be activated by killing enemy players or veteran elite NPCs. So anybody with a purple or a yellow bar above their head are fair game. Anybody else, the little red guys, will not proc this. Uh, but the signature skill that is up on rotation when an enemy is killed is activated for 10 seconds when all primary stats are balanced between each other. These times are shortened depending on the difference in the range of your primary attributes. So like I, you know, how I have here, like I was saying, I'm getting about 7 seconds and to me that's just fine. Uh, but you can no longer activate signature skills or be affected by ally signature skills. So when yours go off when you kill a veteran or elite npc you're not helping out the team in any way and if you go down your ally teammates will not be able to pick you up so if you are going to be running this in a group i would definitely say break the six piece run maybe a barrett chest piece or you could go with a vigorous chest piece maybe a specialized backpack some savage gloves whatever your preference may be just break the six piece that way if you go down your teammates can revive you um, so other than that, let's take a look at the weapons really quick and then the gear set and we'll be off to the character sheet because I can't wait to show you the character sheet. That's where all the magic happens. Uh, now, my primary weapon is the LVOA. I have Ferocious, Deadly, Destructive, and Predatory on here. To me, this has been working out awesome. I really enjoy how this works out. The sustainability of Predatory is awesome on both weapons, no matter what. Predatory will be procced, and I'm always getting that heal. Every time you know, put someone down, it, it will reproc, and it's a great thing. You could always go with Determined to get your skills back a little quicker, maybe Competent to get your weapon damage up a little bit. Whatever you want, 
I'm simply going with predatory just for the sustainability. Uh, now, the mods that I have on the weapon, the magazine is mag size, crit chance, rate of fire. The optics are crit chance, stability, and crit damage. I'm not going with the big crit damage uh, optics just because I'm trying to get that crit chance up a little bit more, and that 7% is definitely a good way to do it. Now, my muzzle has the crit damage, crit chance, accuracy on it, and the underbarrel has crit damage, stability, and optimal range. Now, my secondary is uh, lightweight M4. It has unforgiving, sustained, predatory, and destructive. This is also an odd combination, but honestly, it is working out very nice. Uh, unforgiving, if I'm getting a little bit low on health, pull this out. Unforgiving goes to work. And somebody had recommended to me to use some kind of health on a kill on my gear set or on the weapon. So I actually rolled sustained on here and killing a target increases your health by 6%. You know, so when I'm putting them down very quickly or if you, you mop up a couple of them real fast, that 6% multiplies pretty quick and you get a nice chunk of health back. I'm actually liking that pretty good on top of predatory being proc. And then we do have destructive on there. Armor destruction is up by 15%. So that's what I've been using as far as weapons go. Let's take a look at the actual gear pieces themselves. All right, so my chest piece here is rolled for firearms. It has enemy armor damage, exotic damage resilience, and ammo capacity on it. And we have two stamina with 4% damage to elite mods on there. Now, them 4%ers are kind of tough to get. Those three fives will work just fine. If you can get a couple of these four percenters, if you can find them in a, a vendor or something, definitely buy them up. It's definitely worth it, 100%. Uh, now, moving on to my mask, we have rolled four firearms with crit chance, damage to elites, and then we have a stamina with damage to elite mods on there as well. The knee pads here, we have rolled for stamina. And we have crit damage, shock resistance, burn resistance, and damage to elites. So we're doing pretty good on there. And we have a stamina with 4% uh, damage to elites with a 6% first aid self heal mod. Now, I tried out using maybe a turret uh, with the turret mods on there. It didn't work out too good, even though I do have a little bit of electronics. It, it wasn't working out, so I just went with the heal because any way you can boost your heal if you need it is definitely a good thing in PvE running solo. Uh, now, my holster here, we have 1401s across the board with crit chance, and we also have a 6% first aid self-heal on there. The gloves are rolled for stamina with assault rifle damage, crit chance, and damage on there. And the backpack is rolled for electronics. It's the only piece that's rolled for electronics other than what is on the holster. Uh, but it definitely helps out a lot for the, making your heels a little bit stronger and also balancing the build a little bit more so you get that longer signature. It has crit damage, ammo capacity on it, and we have a stamina with damage to elite mods with two more 6% first aid self heals on there. So that's about that. That's the build right there. Let's take a look at the character sheet and see what that all breaks down to. We got the weapon damage at 21,000 per bullet. The crit chance is at 27%, but it will be up a little bit higher since we do have the uh, pulse going there. Uh, the crit damage also 117%. Uh, headshot damage 75%, so we're doing pretty solid there. Now, uh, moving on to, we have the all-weapon damage bonus of 15%, and we're getting that from Alpha Bridge, the gear set itself. Now, if I was to pop my booster shot, that's another 15%. So, that's 30% all-weapon damage bonus up on top of 12% assault rifle damage. So, we're just stacking that damage up as much as we can, and this is it right here. Damage to elites, 58%. Now, from what I understand, there isn't necessarily a cap for damage to elites, but 58% is the maximum you can get on your build and your weapon combined. This is the max you can get. Now, the only way you can push this any farther, drink some water. Drink some water, 20% damage to elites up. Now you're at 78% damage to elites, and that's better than any kind of crit chance damage, anything at all. So basically, take your per bullet uh, damage and then just you know, add up 58% of that or 78% of that. That's what you're actually going to be hitting for. On top of the crits, it's amazing. It hits like a truck. I am loving it. 
it's a great thing. Um, so either way, moving on, we do have that 45% enemy armor damage. So we're going to be cutting through that enemy armor like butter. Uh, moving on, we have a little bit extra skill power. Nothing too crazy, but it's enough to get your skills a little bit stronger, make them heals, actually heal you a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, now, moving on, survivability, not doing too bad there. The armor, we're almost maxed out. I just have to optimize my chest piece, I believe, like one more time or something like that, and we'll pretty much be there. Uh, the health regeneration, 33.8, not too bad there. We have some exotic damage resilience, 11% there. We have some burn, and we have some shock resistance. I don't have any bleed on there. I wish I had a little bit, but honestly, I am much more worried about the burn resistance from the big flamers, and I do not like being paused by those grenaders that just like to throw them shock grenades at you. Not a good time for me, and I'm not running a immunizer for this build, so definitely getting those resistances up a little bit as well as the resilience just a little bit definitely goes a long way definitely check it out guys so that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed this or took something away from it i really enjoy this build and i hope you do too so until next time guys i hope you take it easy if you enjoy this video or find it helpful definitely smash that like button subscribe for future content especially if you are new to the channel and make sure you have that notification bell on as well as go ahead and drop a comment down there letting me know how you're running alpha bridge in pve in 1.8.3 so until next time, guys, take it easy. I will see you then. Later.